There's a cool hole over here. I switched sides so I could get on the side and I could tight line. Um, high stick, I mean, high stick the, the middle of that run. So I was on that side of the river. But if I get over there, I'll be under the trees and I have some stuff to deal with. If I get over here, then I can walk out and, and high stick. So decided to uh, get on the other side. That's a pretty good looking run. All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Uh, I got another walkthrough video for you guys today. Uh, super cool spot I found in Wyoming. This is from my last day in Wyoming. I did two videos on this stream already. Um, so I'll link those here. One, I go into my rig, explain everything I'm doing. So if you're interested in seeing uh, the flies, the leader, the tippet, all that, that's in this video right here. I think it's 50 fish in 70 minutes. Um, but just to start it out, I'm fishing the eight and a half foot four weight, four X to my first fly and 4x to my dropper. The water's a little bit stained, um, although it's cleaning up. It rained all night before, so as the day started, uh, it was kind of stained, and then it cleared up as the day went on. But anyway, uh, the point I wanted to make about this video was um, in the last video I made, walkthrough video, I talked about why adding weight could be helpful. This video, I'm going to talk about why adding length and not necessarily adding any shot on your, on your dropper would be helpful. Uh, but before we get to that, let me stop it right here and just explain. I'm going to break this pull up into two sections. I'm going to talk about in front of this lay down is one, that's the upper pull. Anything behind the tree, I'm going to call that the lower section of this pool. And you kind of see there's there's places for fish to be. The lower has a ton of fish holding structure. you got chunk rock. You've got this big hole right here. It was important to me when I saw this to get on the side I'm on right now because I want to fish the shade. I want to fish where that, that flow is coming in, where the seam is coming across those rocks. There just seems to be fish that could be anywhere in this run. So after a few casts and I'm not catching anything, I, I realized right away I need to go ahead and make an adjustment. I'm guessing I need to get a little bit deeper, so I'm going to add on. So let me pause it right here. This doesn't look... I'm, I'm fishing probably closer to 24 inches uh, down, maybe even closer to like 26. The, the picture doesn't do a, a, a great job. What it does show though is I don't have any shot on. Um, but you can kind of tell my dry fly, it's actually probably five or six inches below my hand. It's just hard to kind of tell. But you can kind of see when I start catching fish that I'm fishing deeper than I was when I started. Just need to go a little deeper. So what I'm going to do, and this is the important, uh, the key aspect of this video is I'm not going to add shot. I'm going to add length. I'm going to let the flies, uh, my bead head, it's a Pertagon. Um, I'm going to let it get down on its own. I have enough room in this run. This is a long, slow, not a very turbulent uh, run with lots of places for fish to be. I don't want to be throwing stones in there basically. And that's what you're doing when you start adding shot on. You, you start throwing basically like little pebbles all through your run and that spooks fish. The fly itself, if I have enough room and, I, room and I can cast in front of my target, the flies will settle on their own. And all you have to do at that point in time is just figure out how far in uh, front of a, uh, your target you want to cast and let your fly settle. So that's the adjustment I make here and immediately start catching fish. Um, nothing super special, but it at least tells me that I'm in the zone now. And again, I'm focusing on this side right here closest to me first. I want to go ahead and work through this hole. I feel like um, I got on this side because I felt like this rock here in front of me would shield me from any fish that might be using it as, uh, to shelter and hide and take cover. Uh, basically, that rock is basically like a big wall to them down there, right? And I'm just going to work through that hole several more times, see if I can catch some fish. Again, another little small fish. Nothing, nothing super exciting, but it tells me, hey, the adjustment I made is putting the, the flies in the right, the right spot. And again, I just keep working. I don't feel like, you know, two or three fish out of a spot is, is enough, so I'll just keep fishing. Check out the spider, dude. Jeez. I had one of those fall on my hat the other day. It's like in the front of my brim, like right in my eyeball. <laughs> I almost quit. 
like, I'm going home. Get off. Go, you gotta go. I don't know where he came from, but <laughs> he was like right here in my eye. And I was like, get off. <laughs> All right. Had a battery die, so need to uh, redo the battery. Let's see. And catch a couple more fish out of this hole. So let me talk about the back of the pool a little bit closer. Um, I basically divided this pool into two sections. It was anything behind the chunk rock, so you can see this line coming out. Basically fishing any of the any of the, the spots behind the rocks as the, the flow moved over the rocks. The fish will hang out behind the rocks and grab food as it comes by, right? But I also want to make sure that I fish in front of these rocks because fish will hang out in front of the structure. And I talked about that uh, in the last walkthrough video as well. So basically I've walked up, I'm standing beside this lay down now, and I'm working all the little pockets and holes, all the little deep little spots you can see. It's easy to see if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, but you can kind of you can kind of see it here. But behind the rocks, on the side of the rocks, and in front of the rocks, and I'm just basically fishing basically what I would call um, the upper section of the lower pool. And I find a couple more fish. It's always nice when one rises, gives you an idea where where the fish are holding. So lots of rainbows and cutthroat uh, and cut bows in the stream. A couple browns, pretty good uh, pretty good stream overall. And I think I caught one brook trout. So overall, it's pretty fantastic day. Uh, continue working through the hole a couple more times, just trying to be thorough. I've talked about that before. Um. And like I say, I'll I'll go back. You know, if I'm drifting through a stream, I'll let it go behind me and just you know, as you're fishing through holes, sometimes you put fish down, and then if you'll get, you know rest it for a second, fish will get active again. So I'll just do a little drift through there every now and then. Okay, so I've moved in front. This is the upper section of this hole. This is in front of the tree and you can kind of tell good deep, deep little spot here some chunk rock on the other side some shade uh and a nice this is a little bit more more flow but i'm going to go ahead and start off with the same rig and i talked about my nymphing video um i'll basically cast in the front and i'll let my flies drift with the with the flow but i have enough time if they get down on their own but i'm fishing the back of the pool because uh, my flies don't have enough time to get down at the front of this because the water is just too fast Kind of slow the clip down right here so you can see I don't have any shot on right now. So I'll drift through a couple times, pick up a couple fish, uh, and I feel like you know I'm not really covering enough of the water anymore. So this is when I start adding shot on, uh, and I use Dinsmore uh, removable egg shot. It's super easy to get off. I've talked about it a couple times, but it has a little groove on the side, and all you can do when you need to take it off is just stick your thumbnail in it and take it off. I use number four, number six. Uh, and then I have, you know, the lead BB shot as well when I needed. But I've talked about and shown the, um, the shot that I used in the San Juan video I did. I think that was the 200 inches of trout. So I'll link that here if you're interested in seeing the shot. But it makes it easy to add shot on, shot on and off when you're fishing. Uh, and that's all I do. You can kind of see, don't have any shot on right now. And I'm just fishing, you know, basically letting the, the current flow. My flies have enough time to get down as long as I'm, I'm concentrating and know that probably most of the fish are going to be taking the fly at the back of the pool. I've done that on purpose. I don't really need to, to add shot on just yet. Fish in the same depth as I was the back of the pool, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some shot on right here. It takes a few seconds. I'll let the camera roll just to give you an idea that, you know, what I do. I basically just, you know, pull some shot out. It's a number four. Uh, I'll probably take out one or two just in case I need to add some on um, and then just start fishing and just see what happens. And again, this is one of those things you just kind of have to make some adjustments. If you've added shot on, you're still not catching fish, add some more shot on. If you've added some more shot on, you still not catch a fish, you probably need to lengthen your dropper. It's, you just kind of, kind of feel it out and see what's happening and how the fish are responding. There's not really a, it's not science. It's just kind of got to, you know, work your way through it. But within like two or three casts, I catch a fish. I feel like I'm in a good depth. I got the right length on my dropper and fish are responding. So that's a good day.
Dude, stop. Stop. There you go. And now you're free. You chill out the net for a second. Alright guys, so that pretty much concludes the video. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Try to walk through what I'm kind of looking here and how I, you know, one of the biggest adjustments I make isn't necessarily always adding weight. Sometimes it's adding depth. If you guys got any questions, drop those below. We'll put together some more videos for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching.